Hi everybody. Now today I want to just spend a few minutes talking about indigenous protected areas. And as I said, this is only going to be a sort of a brief lecture. It is important that governments protect our ecosystems as these ecosystems provide us with food and water. But they also provide us with employment opportunities and an export market which is good for our own economy. One of the ways that the Australian government is doing this is by supporting Indigenous Australians to manage areas of land to ensure that plants, animals and sites of cultural significance are protected. This is done through the Indigenous Protected Area Program. 25% of Australia's national reserve system are on indigenous, protect, are indigenous protected areas. Therefore, indigenous protected areas make a significant contribution to biodiversity conservation in Australia. In Australia today, there are about 50 declared indigenous protected areas. Of course, prior to the introduction of Indigenous protected areas, Indigenous people often worked closely with government agencies such as Conservation, Customs and Coast Watch and Fisheries Departments. So what are Indigenous, indigenous protected areas? An Indigenous protected area is an area of land or sea where traditional owners and the Australian government have entered into an agreement to promote biodiversity and cultural resource conservation. Indigenous protected areas are not legally binding contracts. They are voluntary agreements that governments enter into with Indigenous landowners. Indigenous protected areas also, like native title, do not extinguish existing laws. So, what does this mean? This means that non-Indigenous stakeholders can continue to use these lands as they always have. Indigenous protected areas are a voluntary agreement between Indigenous landowning groups and government. When they enter into an agreement, they are committed to promoting biodiversity and conserving cultural resources in line with a set of international standards. Now, some of the activities that the government like to see in these plans that communities present to them include activities such as weed and feral animal control, fire management, tourism and cultural heritage work. Most Indigenous protected areas are the result of Indigenous people wanting to have more control of their lands. Indigenous protected areas set out to do three things. One, support Indigenous landowners to develop, declare and manage Indigenous protected areas on their lands as part of Australia's National Reserve System. Two, support Indigenous interests to develop cooperative management arrangements with government agencies to manage protected areas. Three, support the integration of Indigenous ecological and cultural knowledge 
with contemporary protected area management practices. Indigenous protected areas offer a range of benefits to Indigenous people and non-Indigenous people. They provide social, community, health and well-being and economic benefits. Indigenous protected areas are one of the most successful conservation programs. In addition to looking after the environment, Indigenous protected areas also provide employment opportunities for Indigenous and non-Indigenous people in areas where there are few employment opportunities. Indigenous protected areas do more than provide environmental benefits. They also assist Indigenous people to protect their cultural heritage and consequently improve their health and well-being. The Indigenous communities who participate in Indigenous protected areas are often more healthy and enjoy more social cohesion. Indigenous protected areas also provide Indigenous people with the opportunity to pursue economic ventures such as establishing bush tucker nurseries and manufacturing and selling bush tucker. The economic development potential through these sorts of ventures provides employment opportunities and strengthens regional and remote economies while at the same time allowing indigenous people to care for their country to maintain culture traditions and language one of the real benefits of indigenous protected areas is that they allow indigenous landowners to co-manage land with state and territory governments to work together to achieve the best outcomes for all Australians. So how do people go about applying for indigenous protected area status? Well if Indigenous landowners want to apply to have land recognised as an Indigenous protected area, they must first make contact with the Department of the Environment, Water, Heritage and the Arts. The Department of the Environment, Water, Heritage and the Arts will assist them to work with other Indigenous people in the area and other non-Indigenous stakeholders in the area to determine if it is worthwhile and to determine what the benefits will be. After the Department of the Environment, Water, Heritage and the Arts receive applications, they send them to the relevant state and territory government agencies who then assess them. Now an important part of this assessment process is providing feedback to unsuccessful applicants so they can improve their applications in the future. Part of the application process is developing a plan of management. Now this plan may include for example talking to relevant state and territory conservation agencies that may be able to support projects, getting expert advice on the values of the Indigenous Protected Area Program and how these should be managed and protected, visiting existing Indigenous Protected Areas to talk to the Indigenous landowners 
about their experiences with developing an Indigenous protected area. Now this plan will go a long way to determining if the application will go ahead if it is successful. Now this plan may include for example the following. The activities that will be undertaken to manage land and or cultural sites. The decision making structures that will be used to manage projects and make decisions. The World Conservation Strategy Union category that will guide the way the Indigenous protected area is managed. Now, applications are usually assessed against the following criteria. One, that the projects are located in Australia on land that has priority ranking. Two, that the community applying for an Indigenous protected area has a strong interest in managing the land and the project. Now, if an area of land is accepted as an Indigenous protected area, the landowners must abide with set monitoring and evaluation programs. Now under Indigenous Protected Area Program, Indigenous landowners can work in collaboration with conservation groups and researchers and universities for example to monitor the results each Indigenous Protected Area is achieving. Now in terms of the administration, this is usually done by local indigenous organisations and or land councils. So thank you for your time. See you all next week.